Hi, Founder fans. Jason here. Welcome to Founder of the Day Trivia, Friday Night Trivia. I hope you're ready to name some names and do some guessing and have some fun. Right off the bat, got to say a big thank you to you and you and everyone watching because I just yesterday hit 1,000 subscribers, which I know on the YouTube isn't actually a whole lot, but from my perspective, talking about the American Revolution, it is tremendous. So thank you so much very much for your courtesy uh, viewing and enjoying the American Revolution alongside me and learning along with me. Uh, we are about to play trivia. We are going to do a few things. We'll do a few warm-up questions right here. Thanks, Ginger. How are you doing? Uh, I'm going to do a few warm-up questions, and then we will go into... Today, we're going to do revolutionary authors, which you might have seen in the thumbnail, which is very exciting. Furthermore, uh, I did forget to change the date when I put this up, so it says last week's date, but no, I assure you it's February 19th. <laughs> uh, also, we are going to do, we're going to try and outdo ourselves from last week. Last week, when we did our big grand finale at the end, we were able to name 196 members of the legislative branch. So this week, we're going to try and get four more and hit 200. That would be fantastic. I would be very, very pleased. I, we will all be very pleased. Uh, so, remember, while we're going through, make sure you throw in your answers as we go along. Anyone pop it in? We're just getting started. Going to ask some questions. Let's do a warm-up question, shall we? Uh, why don't we do a warm-up of the History Happen Here cards? Hi, Ashley. Welcome. Uh, if you didn't hear me, we got 196 in our big wrap-up at the end. Uh, we rename all the founders last week, so we're going to try and hit 200 this week. Uh, but first, we do a warm-up question as people start sailing on in. Uh, again, thanks, guys, for 1,000 subscribers is, is amazing, and I super appreciate it. So, we're going to take ourselves down to South Carolina. We are going to Hanging Rock, South Carolina. Uh, August 6th, 1780. What happened in Hanging Rock, South Carolina, just south of the North Carolina border? Again, what happened in Hanging Rock, South Carolina, uh, in August 6th, 1780. Thank you so much, Ashley. I appreciate it. I especially appreciate you guys who come and, and really participate on these, you know, more laid-back weekend uh, time, fun time chats. Uh, while I'm waiting for someone to answer, I guess uh, I should note uh, 1780 is just about a year before the uh, uh, Battle of Yorktown. Uh, I'm assuming it's the Battle of Hanging Rack or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Ashley, you and I came up with basically the same thing at the same time. Probably the Battle of Hanging Rock. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. So let's let's go. Let's find out. Patriot forces assisted by warriors of the Kitwa Kitaba tribe. I, I'm sorry, I always mispronounce that because the in my my mind the the A and the W need to are like they switch in my mind for whatever reason. Uh, Patriot forces, assisted by warriors of the Catawba tribe, attack and defended a large contingent of British and Loyalist troops. The majority of Native Americans who fought in the American Revolution sided with the British, hoping to oust the settlers. The Catawba tribe were among the few tribes who supported the Americans. Their choice was made partly from necessity, as a smallpox academic, epidemic had decimated the tribe, leaving it outnumbered and surrounded by white neighbors. Charleston's Council of Safety offered rewards to the Catawba tribe for joining forces with the Americans, yet also told them, quote, If you do not mind what we say, you will be sorry for it by and by. Great. The Catawba tribe provided su supplies to the Americans, scouted for enemies and spies, fought alongside the Patriots against the British loyalists and major Native American threat to the South, the Cherokee. So, everyone join us. We're just summing up our first, what hap our first question was what happened in... Uh, in Hanging Rock, South Carolina in August of 1780. Um, it doesn't specifically say the name of the battle. I guess we'll call it the Battle of Ham uh, Hanging Rock, though it probably is better to be called the Skirmish of Hanging Rock. Um, uh, with the Catawba tribe, they defeated a large contingent of British and Loyalist troops. Surprise doesn't have a name, uh, but there it is. There were many, many uh, battles and skirmishes of that nature. So, people are rolling in. Why don't we do our first big... Uh, our first Sporkle trivia that where we work together right about now. And today we are going to be talking about, we're going to be looking at U.S. founding fathers who penned the founding documents of the United States. So here we have a whole slew. I'll go down as far as I can. Uh, these are all 
things that were authored during the American Revolution. Not everything that was authored. There were a lot of people writing things. Now we have five minutes. I'm only about two or three seconds ahead of you guys. I really figured it out, I think. Uh, so I am going to hit play as soon as I see someone guess a name. So why don't you guys throw out a name and uh, we'll type it in and we'll go from there. As you see, uh, it goes kind of by date. We are looking for 32 names. And I'm trying to make sure my head's not in the way, but we have common sense. Okay, and Ginger coming out strong with Jefferson. Yes, probably involved with writing the Declaration of Independence. Hamilton, does his name appear up? Yes, it pops up twice, actually. Madison, yeah, probably. Jay, absolutely. We got the Federalist Papers. Way to start strong, guys. Way to start strong. So, um... We got Madison wrote the Bill of Rights. He gets all the credit, apparently. Oh, we got some names coming in hard. Adams, Payne, uh, Thomas Payne. Yes. Hi, Troy. Welcome. Thank you for being a subscriber. We have a thousand subscribers. It's very exciting. Although I did, uh, I, when it hit 999, my dad had been holding out for a very long time uh, to be the 1,000 subscriber. And it's, it's really nice that he actually was able to get in there and be that 1,000 subscriber. So cheers to dad. <laughs> um, so, we're waiting for more people. Now, uh, the drafter of the articles, uh, Franklin, definitely Franklin. Uh, definitely one of the draftees of the deck of the Declaration of Independence. Um, articles Confederation, a very big name. Um, someone who did not sign the Declaration of Independence, chose not to, but still wrote the... Uh, did not sign the Declaration because he thought there should be a new government put in place first. Um... Over here, for Declaration of Independence, this is the Committee of Five they're referencing. When the Declaration of Independence was set to be written in the weeks leading up to the 2nd of July, where they debated and then voted for independence, uh, the there was a Committee of Five. Now, these last two people were not very much involved <laughs> in it. I will give you a hint. One of them, uh, I think we did get Adams up there. I will try it again. Yeah, we have Adams under the Declaration here. Uh, so definitely a right answer. Now, um... I'll give you a hint. Uh, the person who signed everything was one of the members of the Committee of Five that drafted the Declaration of Independence. Additionally, there was... Uh, there it is, Ashley. It's a pretty easy hint, huh? Yes, Roger Sherman. And actually, over here was part of the Connecticut Compromise. Uh, these are proposed plans of the, the general outline of the Constitution. Henry, great question. Henry, yes. Patrick Henry, one of the Anti-Federalists. Ooh, I didn't even realize there were Anti-Federalist papers down here. Uh, I, I should have paid more attention. Um, I do want to point out behind me, uh, American Dictionary of the English Language. So think about dictionaries. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Lauren, how's it going? Born, is that, did you misspell your own name or was that a guess? Okay. <laughs> uh, Yates, there it is, Ashley. Probably, probably. Oh, okay. So here there's this uh, thing here. Melanchthon Smith. Uh, I'm sure the, the asterisk is probably also for maybe Yates, maybe this person because we don't really know. Again, this is a, an important family here, though did not actually sign the document. Uh, a cousin signed the document. Uh, this is a person who would have signed all the documents had he not not signed the declaration. Lee is always a good guest, Ginger. No, 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 Lee's here. Again, uh, I know my head is blocking it, and it shouldn't be, uh, but uh, dictionary. Uh, you guys have all seen dictionaries in the English language. What's the name on the dictionary that we read? Back when we read dictionaries. <laughs> um, Morris is probably a good... Uh, Governor Morris. Right. Good job, Lauren. Now, Morris' son, I don't believe, no. But Governor Morris did draft the Declaration of uh, the United States Constitution. There it is, Ginger Webster. Daniel... Uh, Noah Webster. Daniel, not Daniel Webster. Noah Webster was a founder, lived about this time. Now, 1782... 28 is a little bit later than the Revolution, but it is when he was, and you got it too, good job, Lauren. Uh, it was when uh, he was part of that generation of founders. He just wrote it a little bit later in life. Um, again, one of the major founders, arguably uh, the seventh or eighth most important person in the American Revolution, right here. Uh, other plans, we've talked about uh, one of the people they're looking for was chairman of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, proposed Virginia plan is the person who proposed it uh, it was also called his last name. He was sitting governor of Virginia at the time. It would be the first attorney general and later the second, the second secretary of state. Um, New Jersey plan. Uh, uh, 
uh, I, yeah, I, it's hard to give hints. <laughs> John, Johnson, that's a good guess. William Samuel Johnson. Uh, I don't know if this is what you're going for, but yes, apparently did help draft the Constitution. I forgot about him. Uh, uh, I don't know how to. I don't. I can't. I don't know how to give any good hints, other than real important. <laughs> really important. And I'm running low on time. I'm probably about three seconds ahead of you guys, so I will run out a little bit ahead of time. This is a little bit of a tricky one. That's okay. John Dickinson. John Dickinson sat out the. Uh, he did not sign the Declaration. He actually uh, absented himself from the vote on independence because. Primarily, there were a few reasons, few concerns, but primarily, he did not, uh, he wanted there to be a replacement government before they declared independence, or else he thought things might get a little sticky. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, we did miss uh, Edmund Randolph, I was going for, he's the one who proposed the Virginia plan that James Madison gets credit for, and it was called the Randolph plan the whole time, and then he was there and didn't even sign the document. Wilson, one of those legal minds, super important. Uh, I, I thought they were going for, uh, Luther Martin with this one. We missed Randolph Rutledge Ellsworth. Again, Wilson would have been and Gorm I was trying to hint at. So pretty good, man. What we get? 18 out of 32. We got more than half of them. It's not bad. Uh, literally not one of the names there I don't recognize. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's again one of the premises of this whole channel is there were so many people who deserve so much credit for the American Revolution. Uh, I mean, we did get Webster. We got Madison's on a bunch of them. We got the Federalist Papers. It's important. Uh, I think it was Ginger got, got Henry over here. Um, George Clinton is a tough one. Mercy Otis Warren. Okay, um, she counts. Uh, there were a lot of anti-federalist papers, as we've discussed recently. So I'm a little surprised that's there. Oh, we missed Rufus King. That's a shame. He'll be all right. All right. I'm going to bring myself back up here. So what do you guys say we do a few more of these trivia cards, if you will? Uh, why don't we pop over to... Oh, this one of these, uh, again, they're from the kids game. <laughs> uh, there's supposed to be a game behind it. Uh, thank you guys for hitting like it. Thank you for being here. Uh, this card focuses on help from Europe. Hey, John Adams, welcome to the team. Just getting started. You didn't miss much. Uh, but we're about to ask some questions regarding help from Europe. Again, with these these cards, there are six questions, three labeled student and three labeled scholar. They are uh, a little bit easier for a younger audience, a little bit more difficult for the rest of us. Okay, so question number the first. France, oh, true or false? So, you know, got a pretty good chance on this one. True or false? France supplied money, weapons, and ships to the Patriots, but refused to send soldiers. True or false? France supplied money, weapons, and ships to the Patriots, but refused to send soldiers. It's an interesting question. People coming in with false pretty quick. Yeah, uh, they did send soldiers. I mean, they came over on boats, so, uh, you know, Trump might be trying to trick us and say they're Navy or, or Marines. Um, they and, and also, they didn't really send us ships. They sent their ships that they intended to keep. <laughs> um, uh, and it says, I see, okay, we got some truths, some false. Oh, there's some division in this one. Interesting. Uh, false. They sent soldiers as well. Yeah, that's, a, again, a tricky question. Unfortunately, these trivia questions can be a little tricky. Because, uh, like, false, they did send soldiers, but, like, they were on boats. Um, and I also feel like it's false... They didn't send us ships. They they sent their ships to help. <laughs> um, all right. Next question. The British hired thousands of soldiers from Germany. What were these soldiers called? Were they called Hessians, Redcoats, or Long Knives? Interesting question. The British hired thousands of soldiers from Germany. What were they called? And everyone's coming in with the correct answer, it seems. Um, yes, they were called Hessians, uh, I assume. Yeah, Hessians. They weren't all from Hesse, uh, which is where the word Hesse comes from. Again, Germany at the time wasn't a unified nation. It was a part of the Holy Roman Empire, technically. Most of it was still hanging out. <laughs> thousands of years later, the Holy Roman Empire was still technically around uh, 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 
G Germany had broken into separate states and didn't really consider themselves Holy Roman Empire, especially, you know, we're 150 years after, uh, even more, almost 250 years after uh, Martin Luther um, and his famous ordeal <laughs> um, uh, with Catholicism. <laughs> and, uh, yes, the answer is Hessians. Uh, Troy, yes, Brunswickians is very hard to say. So they were from, is it Brunswick? Uh, and then there's another one that always escapes me. And it wasn't even, they're not even from Hesha, they're from Hesha Castle. Um, yada, yada, yada. So there were a lot of different uh, Germans. Though there were Germans who didn't participate, as we talked about last week. You know, uh, Frederick the Great, who was alive at this time, did not let his soldiers go. Although technically Prussia wasn't part of Germany. Um, he would not let the Germans travel through his lands. Anyway, next question. Another true or false? True or false? Italy was the first European country to declare support for the Patriots. True or false? Italy was the first European country to declare support for the Patriots. And I'm going to stall for a second until I see some answers coming in. Uh, whether or not Italy was the first country to support the Patriots. Uh, I see some... Uh, that's, oh, that's all right, John Adams. No, you know, you make it when you can, you know, you know, there's only so much we can do. We miss you too. Glad you're here. Everyone's coming in with false and you're right. Um, Italy was not the first country. Uh, it was France was the first one to officially support the Patriots. Um, uh, no, Spain is a good guess. I believe the order, and I might be mistaken about this, is France, then the Netherlands, and then Spain. Spain was always like, iffy about it because they were right there on the other side of the Mississippi and like wanted Florida and things like that um actually Italy was also like like I was just saying about Germany not a nation like we think of it today it was separate principalities they usually refer to them as the palpal states although that didn't even include all of them uh for example like Ralph Izzard was sent as the first uh, minister to Tuscany he was not sent to Italy he was sent to Tuscany, though Tuscany actually refused to see him. Italy was actually pretty far behind. But again, lots of separate countries in their minds, uh, separate states. Again, we use the word state nowadays in a very different way than it was used back then. Uh, that's why I always like to remind you that after independence, the United States viewed themselves as separate states, countries, nations. Ouchies, got myself with the card. I'm freezing up a little bit. It says I have actually conditioned, but it looks like I'm freezing up. All right, I'm back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, now we're going to move on to the little bit more difficult questions, the scholar questions. So, how much was Marquis de Lafayette paid to become one of George Washington's military aides? This is a very interesting question. It's a little bit, uh, it's not so deceiving. I move myself out of the way because I move backwards on my screen. I do the opposite over here of what I'm doing in real life. Uh, I'm going to wait you guys to uh, pay a little bit of answers. That's not how you talk. <laughs> um, I'll wait for you guys to put some answers in. Uh, nothing. Yeah, you guys are all saying the right answers. Like, Marquis de Lafayette famously paid his own way. He actually came over. He was a super rich 19-year-old who had been orphaned, trained in the French military. Not going to tell you his whole life story, but comes over. And by the time he gets here, the Continental Congress is like, no, we're not accepting any more French. Sorry, we know that Franklin and Dean are promising you guys commissions, but we just can't keep putting you over and then uh, over American officers. And then he was like, I'll pay for myself. And just about that time, George Washington showed up and met him and was like, in love. <laughs> and they were like, okay, great. <laughs> He was a charming fella. I understand it. Okay, so next question. Cavalry leader Count Casimir Pulaski was f fought bravely for the Patriots. Where was he born? France, Poland, or Spain? Where was Casimir Pulaski born? France, Poland, or Spain? It's interesting. I've I've never I knew I know he I knew he was nobility. I just never uh, I never heard him called Count before. That's interesting. I have some things coming. Uh, I want to be in my next life. A super rich teenager. Oh my, wouldn't that just be so dandy, Troy? Wouldn't that just be a great time? Uh, did I know Lafayette was shot during his first battle? Yeah, I believe, was Lafayette shot twice? He might have been wounded twice, if memory serves. Um, 
I'm not a very, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself an expert on Lafayette. I'm super, I'm very interested in him. I actually know more about Lafayette coming back 40 years later on his grand tour than I know. <laughs> like, uh, I have a cursory knowledge of his uh, uh, performance. Um, again, I've never been, uh, you know, until a few years ago when I started writing about the revolution, I, I was never really a military history nerd. <laughs> But I'm very much learning. Uh, yeah, everyone's right. It is Poland. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> I'm stalling to give you time to answer, and then I forget to stop stalling sometimes. Uh, yes, he's from Poland. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Pulaski. I say Pulaski. I think it might be pronounced Pulaski. There's actually a town north of me called Pulaski named in his honor. Um, there's also, Chicago has a Karamir Pulaski Day. And then there's a, uh, an artist I like called Sufjan Stevens who has a song called Casimir Kaz Pulaski Day, which is totally unrelated to the American Revolution, but uh, the, uh, that album is amazing. <laughs> Last question on this particular card. What important battle helped Ben Franklin convince France to help fight the British? What important battle got the French to support the Americans openly in their rebellion against the crown? Because the French already were, as we talked about last week, the French already were basically supporting the revolutionaries, but uh, under the rug, or under the under the radar. Um, I, and, they, yeah, so it took some convincing, uh, because essentially they weren't just supporting us, they were declaring war on Britain again. And they had just finished fighting a war about 15 years earlier, and like the war 15 years earlier, the Seven, seven Years' War that we call the French and Indian War, it was a world war. The American Revolution, once France joins against Spain, again becomes a world war. Like, I've written about fighting in Pondicherry, India. Um, they didn't really get to China, uh, but, you know, India is pretty far away. Um, I'm seeing answers coming in. Uh, I'm seeing a bunch of Saratoga. Uh, I do see, uh, I see a Bunker Hill, too. Uh, the answer is Saratoga. Um, Bunker Hill was very important. That was where the, the war launched off. But it was the Battle of Saratoga in upstate New York that everyone said, oh, whoa, the Americans might be able to do this. And granted, there were mistakes made by the by the British on the way in. Uh, we're going, uh, Michael Troy has been on the podcast, uh, been on the show several times with the American Revolution podcast. He did a sev several episode stint on the Battle of Saratoga. It's amazing. Check it out. Uh, I think he's actually coming back next week, too, so... I'm making some revolutionary friends, and they have a lot to offer uh, in addition to what I do. So it's, it, I'm very excited. Uh, it was like the 13th War. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there were, once the Seven Years' War happened, most wars took up a good portion of the world. <laughs> um, so it seems. So yeah, it's the Battle of Saratoga. So we are past that card. Can take a, no, I'll wait for a second. Uh, let's do one of our Constitution cards. Um... Thank you, Troy. I appreciate that. I really enjoy the interviews, too. Uh, right now, uh, you know what? Let me ask the question, and then I'll, I'll, that'll be in my stall until you guys answer. Again, these Constitution cards aren't necessarily American Revolution. They can be anything Constitution, but I bought it at the... Well, I threw it on the ground. Whoopsie doodle. I bought it at the American... Uh, uh, at the museum in Philadelphia, <laughs> across from State Hall, so uh, it counts. Let's talk about the Constitution. Is it possible for presidential and vice presidential candidates on the same ticket to receive a tie vote in the Electoral College? Is it possible for both the vice president and the president on the same ticket to receive a tie in the Electoral College? Why well, you guys answer that? Um, yeah, thank you, Troy. I, I, I'm really excited about the interviews. The, the issue I'm running into now is I, I don't want to contact people too far in advance because I don't want to say, can you come next month? But I also don't want to, like, sell myself short. So I'm, I'm like, trying to figure out the right rhythm with which to contact new people because everyone I've contacted has been really interested and cool about it. Um, and everyone who's been on has wanted to come back, which is, oh, cat's coming in once an episode. Uh, <laughs> uh They've all wanted to come back, which is really cool. Um, and I, I am trying to space them out so you're not just getting the same person every time. Uh, but yeah, it's... it's. Thank you, Troy. I, I really love them, too. I, I think the interviews are going to take this channel to the next level. Um, I, I We are trying to keep them short. Uh, you know, this is longer. My weekly review is longer. But, you know, most of the videos are trying to keep short so we're not taking up your whole life. 
there's a lot of long form content out there on the American Revolution and, and, and I'm trying to keep it snappy, so to speak. So John Adams is the only one who guessed. Here comes Ashley with a random guess and no. It's a it's basically a yes or no question, so your guess can't be that random. Um, no, the answer is going to be no. No longer. Right. Uh, the election of 1800, yes, Aaron Burr tied with Thomas Jefferson. And they immediately realized that that was kind of a problem. Uh, so, no, no longer. It is the 12th Amendment. Yeah, the 12th Amendment uh, to the Constitution said uh, no. Sorry, Lauren. <laughs> He's drinking out today, man. That's okay, though. We're here to learn. And that's the best part is, you know, we're learn right or wrong, we're learning. You've seen me be wrong at some of these questions, too. Uh, but yeah, the Twelfth Amendment, because it did happen with Thomas Jefferson. That's why the inclination would be to be yes. So I'm going to take a quick sip of my water. Check the time. All right, we got some time to kill. Let's do some more cards. Why don't we do another what happened here? What the heck happened over here? We are in London, England, February 27th, 1782. What happened in London, England, February 27th, 1782? I am... 1782 is a several months after Yorktown, which means they know the war is over. But they weren't negotiating treaties in London. They were negotiating treaty in Paris. That's why it ends up being called the Treaty of Paris. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I know there was a gentleman who tried to, uh, and the name escapes me, but tried to sabotage the docks uh, within London. I, I think it's got to be that. Oh, whoa, this is actually really fun and difficult. I don't think anyone's going to get it. Um, by a vote of 234 to 215, the British House of Commons passed a motion to end the war in America. The motion stating, quote, the war in America be no longer pursued for the impractical purpose of reducing the inhabitants to obedience by force, end quote, directly countered the wishes of King George III. Even after the defeat at Yorktown, the king planned to continue the war. Britain still had 12,000 troops in New York, 5,000 in Charleston, as well as control of Savannah and Wilmington. But the long, costly war had ex exhausted patience in Parliament. On March 20th, Prime Minister Lord North resigned. His replacement, Lord Rockingham, immediately sought negotiations with the Americans. Ben Franklin met with Britain's Richard Oswald and Thomas Grenville in Paris on April 12th, and the men began, prel began preliminary talks while waiting for the other Amer American delegates to arrive. John Adams, Henry Lawrence, and John Jay to join them. That is amazing. I did not know that story. Yes, Lord North resigned. I he was uh, <laughs> missed it by a month. Oh, oh, Troy, that was your guess. Oh, yeah. Whoa, great guess. Whoa, great guess. Uh, as as you mentioned, Lord North resigns, kind of in disgrace for you know losing the colonies <laughs> when his job was to you know not lose the colonies. <laughs> um, very interesting. Really interesting that, that the actual act uses the phrase uh, the impractical, impracticable purpose of reducing the habitants to obedience by force. I'm going to put this aside. You know, we're going to talk more about this because I am going to uh, write an article coming up soon about that. So we'll be definitely be talking about that soon. Where are we at? 30 minutes. You know what? We have about five more minutes before we can start our big roundup. Uh, why don't we do another card? Hokely dokely. Ooh, and the theme of this card is independence. Got the Liberty Bell in there. I'm going to have to hold it at a weird angle because I got these hot lights burning down on me. <laughs> um, it did happen in London. Well, yes, it, yeah, it did happen in London. Very interesting. Um, this one only apparently has four questions because there's two noggins choice, which is like part of the gameplay. You'd like throw the, the question at someone else. So, student, question the first. True or false, the Liberty Bell cracked when it was rung to announce the signing of the Declaration of Independence. True and or false. <laughs> I mean, it can't, can't be both. 
Uh, the Liberty Bell was cracked when it was rung to signal independence. Mr. Adams saying it is false. Waiting for other people. That is a really beautiful tale, but it is assuredly false. It was cracked like way later, right? Yeah, it fam it's got its famous crack very much later. It does sound too perfect, Ashley. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it's very much too perfect. Um, okay, another true or false. Uh, true and or false. After the war started, almost all of the colonists supported independence from Britain. True or false? Almost all of the colonists supported independence. Why didn't I just let it? You know, I can never get it. Yeah. You think by my late 30s, I'd figure out how I want my hair to look. <laughs> anyway, true or false, after, after the war started, everyone seemed to love what was going on. I got some falses, got a true in there. Uh, false. Many many colonists wanted to remain loyal. Uh, it's, it's generally thought to be about a third. We'll never know exactly, but about a third of people supported independence, a third of people supported Great Britain, and about a third of the people, I, I call them the forgotten third, because they just didn't care. <laughs> They're like, either way the government's beat. <laughs> and they just went along with it. They were like, tell us who wins. <laughs> okay, uh, scholar, getting a little harder now. The Liberty Bell, pictured on the front of this card, can be visited in what city? Okay, make it a little easier. The Liberty Bell is in what city right now? Where is it? Huh? Huh? Where's the Liberty Bell? Huh? Tell me. Anyone. This is a fairly easy question. If you've ever visited it. <laughs> uh, Troy coming in with Philly. Any other guesses? Any other guesses? Anyone want to take Troy on? Ginger? Agreeing? Kind of? With a question mark? All right. No, Troy, you were right. <laughs> it was DC. Uh, yes, it is in DC. Right across from where I bought these cards, actually. Uh, one's got some of my boards, including Johnny J and my dear cousin Sam to beat up a loyalist. Did, did you? I don't recall John Adams beating up a loyalist. Um, not with John Jay, anyway. Sam Adams, yeah, kind of. He instructed people to do it. Uh, yeah, no, it is in Philadelphia. And actually, on the card, you can see the state house in the background. But again, you can't really see the card. Uh, wait, one last question on here. True or false? Another one. For several years after the war, some states argued over boundaries, taxes, fishing rights, and more. So true or false, after the war, the states had arguments against each other for several reasons. Johnny J was a dear. Yeah, you guys are fine. <laughs> Johnny J, I like it. Uh, true, yeah. Um, there were a plethora of reasons. Uh, right now we have Vermont, but even after the war, New York thought that was New York, and New Hampshire thought that was New Hampshire, and the people who lived there thought they were Vermont. And no one cared what they had to say, except William Samuel Johnson, who we correctly guessed before as a draft of the Constitution, who actually, though he was a Continental Congressman representing Connecticut, uh, was nice enough to agree with certain people living in Vermont to represent their needs as well. All right, well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're not quite at 35 minutes. We got about 15 seconds. So why don't we do one last card, one of these uh, Constitution cards that I got right across the street from the Liberty Bell what feels like a lifetime ago. I mean, yeah, I was just, yeah, it was almost a decade ago. I gotta get back to Philly. Can the government declare an act a crime after it's been committed? Ooh. And this references the federal government. Can the federal government declare the an act a crime after it has been committed? No. Yeah, Troy's coming in with no... Excuse me, no, uh, they're, they're called ex post facto rules, which means after the fact in Latin, I believe. Um, oh, okay, it's actually, oh, prohibits. Okay, I thought it was, it's, uh, the word prohibits goes to the next line, so they use the, the hyphen, and I thought that was some Latin word also. Uh, no, you can't. So, like, if you think, if something's going to be a crime, commit it now before they pass the laws. That is a joke. Uh, hashtag don't commit crimes. Uh, not promoting crime. <laughs> uh, no crimes. 
Um, even though technically I'm telling you to do something that is currently legal before it's a crime, don't do it. <laughs> if it's going to be a crime, probably a bad idea. Any hoozle, we've gotten through all our cards. <laughs> um, gotten through all our cards. So we're right on schedule to do our big old wrap up. Now I'm going to pop over to this screen. I am going to bounce away from this. Uh, you know what, real quick, shout out to Liberty & Co., who is still technically sponsoring these. Uh, we're not giving out any prizes right now. Still figuring out how to reconfigure everything, but look at Liberty Co. Look at all their amazing products. I have most of these shirts. There's the Liberty, uh, it's not the Liberty Bell, it's Paul Revere and Sons Foundry. Uh, they just have amazing products. So definitely if you want something American Revolution, uh, check that out. We are about to start guessing. Now, if you're new here, which I don't think any of you are, we have 20 minutes to name 243 American founders. Now, I have not seen Matt pop in yet. It might, might not be great. I actually haven't seen uh, 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 Amber pop in yet. So we're missing two, two members of the team. We could do it without them, I truly believe, though it would be nice to have them here. We miss you guys dearly if you're watching from the future. Uh, last week, we got 196. So now we're trying to get 200. Now, as we've learned in the past, setbacks are kind of common. We don't always hit the number we hit the week prior. Uh, 200 is a whole lot. Um, Misfit might pop in late and save the day like she did last time. So we'll see. Uh, I am going to do what I always do. I'm going to say, go. Start naming the big six. Get the big six out of the way. Um, and once I see the names coming in, I'll hit play. I'm only about three or four seconds ahead of you. Oh, God, you guys are in. Okay, let's do it. Hamilton. <laughs> Ashley knows the drill. Washington. Oh, that's it. And we're done. <laughs> Jay. Madison. Walker. Good one. Uh, Washington. Do we do Washington? Uh, Jefferson. Two Jeffersons. Monroe. Absolutely. Adams. Don't want to forget Adams. Franklin. Madison. We got Madison. Tillman, good one, Troy. Lansing, yes, Yates, yes, the two men who left. Constitutional Convention, Dana, uh, what do we got? Good Hugh, that's an interesting one to remember. Dickinson, we're remembering him now. Good job, Troy. Uh, Lauren, I think you mean called Walleter? Uh, cold Water? Uh, uh, try and type it again. I don't know how to spell Johnny J. We got J. Okay. Adams. Page. Huger. Good one. Uh, Carol. Got to keep up. Pendleton. Madoff? <laughs> Bernie Madoff? Uh, yes, Randolph, you mean. Okay, we got uh, Hudson. Hosmer with an O. Troy. Nice. Good one, though. Uh, Burr. So what goes with Hudson? We don't want to leave him behind, right? Henry. Oh, do we get... Oh, no, Burr uh, should count, but he's not on this list. He wasn't until the third administration. Uh, I should have acknowledged Henry uh, Morris. This is the legislative branch, um, and it's it's uh, people... Livingston, Sumter. You guys seem to know Wentworth. I, uh, Sumter. Sumter without the P. Got it. Uh, Wentworth. Robert Joe. Skyler. Lawrence. Uh, I spell Lawrence differently. Two different Lawrences spelled differently. Sherman, don't forget him. Hamilton, we got Thompson. Oops. Thompson. Houston. Hancock. Good one. Houston. Coates. Good, good one. Oh. Oh. Charles Coatsworth, uh, uh, Payne, Borum. Thank you for remembering Borum, Lauren. Borum. There we go. Got it. The spelling is strange. Holton, Wadsworth. I think we got. Oh, we didn't. Good. Griffin, Williams. That's why I do him even if I think we did him. Williamson, Giles, Madison. Madison, I think we got. Uh, Matthews, two T's. Matthews, one T. Matthews, Dwayne, Whipple, Paca, Mulligan. Nope. Uh, Gwinnett. You, you're not saying wrong names, uh, guys. Uh, uh, they're just 
Uh, this is the legislative branch. We're trying to name people in the legislative branch. So people who sign the documents in the Continental Congress, uh, Martin, did I do that one? Uh, and Rensselaer, is that how you spell it? No, it's Ren Rensselaer. Uh, I'll come back to Rensselaer. Taylor, Collins, Jackson, Sylvester, no, Hopkins, do we do Hopkins? Uh, Giles, I think we got Giles, actually. It's a great name that we're remembering these. Hopkinson, Lee, we're also looking for people in the first, Elmer, uh, Vining, uh, first House of Representatives or Senate, or someone who signed an important document. Smith, during the revolution. Wit. Black, no, but white, yes. There's one other color. Uh, Stanton, good one. Izzard, yes, we were just talking about Ralph Izzard. Uh, gray, no, gray, no, that's not the color. Bartlett, there is one other color. Gray Sun, Grayson, got it, I got it for you, Ashley. Uh, Broom, Clymer, Lafayette, nope, never actually served in the U.S. government. Blount, uh, he went back to France and got into some stuff over there, Stallone. <laughs> Lawrence, if I can spell it. Dad's Den, yes, with the best flag. Walcott, Walcott, don't you know that it's insane? Morris, got Morris, good. Schwartz, now you're killing me, Mr. Out of Pen. <laughs> Gun, Low, Morris, we, I just tried Morris, yes. Pew, Wilson, did we get Wilson? No, good one. Chase, Carol, oh, we must have already done Carol. Brown, there's the other color, thank you. Stone, Warren, does that, nope. Now Warren's didn't serve in this particular part of the uh, revolution. Uh, we were talking lawmakers. We're looking for lawmakers. Uh, Ellery, did I do Ellery? Did I do use? I mean, you guys are just sending them at me. I can't even keep, I can't even like talk. Livingston, <laughs> Morton, like the salt, good one. Hughes, do we do use? Yes. There's another Morton, you guys are on the same plan. Nope, now, ah, Mr. Adams. You... <laughs> Your answers are good, Mr. Adams. They're just, uh, Think Continental Congressman. Rush. Did I get Rush? Stockton. Do we do Stockton? Wilson. I think we just did. Folsom. Folsom Blues. Climber. Oh, with a C. Climber. I think we did him. Sherman. I think we did, but I'm doing it anyway. Swan. Good guess. Absolutely great guess. Van Dyke. Whoa, Ginger. That was actually right. <laughs> Could tell if you were messing with me or not. Pinkney. King, Willis, that's a good, that's a good guess too, Rutledge, Mifflin, like Dunder Mifflin, King, do we do, Balboa, oh, Mr. Adams trying to throw us off, <laughs> Dayton, we did Dayton, Drayton, we didn't do, Wright, did I spell it, Blair, McHenry. Hensley? Nope. With, I think we did Mr. With. Reed and Reed. Gonna talk about Reed's, the Reed you're typing in is brother to, on Sunday. It's tomorrow's article. Spoiler alert. Ken. Dean. Butler. Shay. Shays. Uh, Fitz. Simmons. Ellsworth, not so many S's, <laughs> more else. Stone, we got Stone. Uh, Philip, nope, Ellsworth, well, yeah, okay, well, I just did. Clark, Warren, I think we tried Warren, oh, that's a great guess, though. Allen, Allen, oh, man, oof, oh, man, seven and a half minutes in. Shippen, maybe, no. Johnston, Johnson, did him backwards this time. Look it up. Oh, wow. We're already 134. The first time I looked up. That's amazing. Christensen. No. Uh, so we, we run into this uh, every week with Christensen and, and Anderson comes up a lot. Um, uh, there weren't really any like Swedish or Norwegians uh, involved, surprisingly. Gregor. Uh, there, well, there would have been people descended like that because Sweden actually had a colony down... I think where Maryland is now for a while. Maybe it was like New Jersey. 
Uh, and I'm talking in it. Okay, did I do Dyer? McGregor's not right. McKean? Uh, Moore, yes. Huntington, yes. Jackson? I think we did Jackson, so that is a right answer. Because uh, the guy who, uh, the Secretary of the Continental Congress was Jackson. Thatcher, Tucker, Baldwin, Galloway, nailed it. Zubley, he got kicked out. Oh, yeah, it doesn't count. It's not everyone in the Continental Congress. It's only people who sign the major documents. Cushing, yes, don't want to forget Mr. Cushing. Um, wow, <laughs> we're doing very good. Sullivan, yes, absolutely Sullivan. Mike Sullivan, coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins, former assistant coach of the New York Hockey Rangers. Otis, yes. Marchant is two, I believe, if I spell it right. Marchant. There's an R in there. Yes. Uh, Tibbles? Nope. Elias? No, uh, no, but I think we already did it, but I think we did Drayton already, right? Yes, because Elias Drayton was in the war, and his son, Hart, uh, his son, uh, Jonathan Drayton, was, I believe, the youngest member of the Constitutional Convention, if not second youngest, like late 20s. Um, Dyer, did I do that? Yep, we got Dyer. Lovell, uh, I was just talking to an author who wrote a book about Lovell that I'm hoping comes on to talk to us. Stevens. Nope, I'm trying. Stockton. Um, I think we did it. Yeah, Mifflin, I think we got. Gibson. Oh, no guitars here. Clinton. No, Clinton is super interesting. There's so many of them. Learner. I, I have a friend named Learner. Uh, uh, Strait. Uh, Smith. I think we did Smith. Smythe. I don't think so. Con Smythe. You listen to my hockey my hockey references. Ross. Uh, yeah, there's so many Clintons, but none of them actually really served in the Continental Congress for any substantial amount of time. They were more focused on New York and being anti-federalists. Uh, although, uh, uh, one, George Clinton, after being governor of New York forever, would be a vice president. He took over for Aaron Burr as vice president of the United States. But again, this is only, that's the executive branch. We're just doing the legislative branch. So I did Ross. Crane. We must have already done Crane, because that's definitely an answer. Howell. Jones. Oh, Nelson. Oh, man. Clinging from Star Trek. Well done, Troy. Matthews. I think we did Matthews. Yeah. Wilson. Didn't forget him this time. Whew. Okay. We, we, we need... We want 46 more. <laughs> Anyone just signing in? We are just naming members of the legislative branch in the revolution. The Continental Congress and then people in the first... Uh, to uh, the first House of Representatives and the first Senate. Uh, Dwayne, absolutely. We must have already got Dwayne because that is a correct answer. Anyone just popping in? I see people popping in. We are naming as many members of the founding generation as we can. Basically anyone who uh, signed anything important in the Continental Congress and anyone who was an inaugural member of the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. Uh, don't worry about saying a name twice. Better say it twice than not at all. Pierce? Roland, maybe? Uh, Ross, I think we did. Clark. Uh, I'm going to ignore the Friends references. <laughs> Gary. Oh, don't want to forget him. Oh, in fact, there's another one. Uh, William Floyd, yes. Green. Nope, I think we got all the colors out. Did we get all the colors? Uh, Teller. Is that? Nope. Biddle should be a right answer. Oh, right up top. Uh, Gary, we just did. Chase. Uh, Bartlett. Bartlett. Did we do Bartlett? Again, it's better to name Lewis. Yeah, I don't forget Lewis. That's at least one name. We. It's better to say a name twice than to not say it at all. So anyone popping in, name names. I'll type them in multiple times. Decatur. No. Decatur. No. <laughs> anyone coming in? I see people popping in. We're just naming as many American revolutionaries as we can. Nachos, what's up, man? Yeah, give us some names. Uh, Thornton. Not do Thornton. Good one. Humphreys is definitely an answer. Um, uh, 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 when something uh, tastes boring. Sturgis. 
Patterson. Yes. Oh. Patterson. One T. Good job, Ashley. Uh, not sure it should be an American Revolution. Well, we'll see. Bland. There it is. You got it. You got my hand. Foster. That's right. Law. Oh, that's a good guess, though. Bland. Oh, okay. Ralph. Nope, we already got Izzard. Um, okay, all right. We are 33 away from our goal of 200. Uh, let's see if I can give hints. Um, uh, Bedford. Gunning Bedford. Wink, wink. Allen. I think we tried Allen. Gunning Bedford. Wink, wink. Broom, I think we did. But a color that's close to Broom? Uh, Pendleton. Definitely want to get that. Um, I don't know if we did uh, gun. There it is, Ashley. You get my hints. Oh, we already did it. Sorry. Shitty hint. Or, or, sorry for my language. <laughs> Poor hint. Bad hint. Uh, I'll try and give hints we didn't do yet. Um, uh, broom. A color that sounds like broom. Kind of. Um, Baldwin. Did we do Baldwin? I think we did. Hawkins. Good one. Um, uh, oh man, uh, Brown, yes, did we do Brown? Oh, we already did Brown. Sorry, Ashley, I'm giving you just terrible hints. Hawkinson, uh, I'm gonna try it. I know it's wrong, but I'm gonna try it. Um, oh, we got Rufus King. Um, trying to give, trying to think of hints. Edwards with an S? Nope, okay. Oh, Gwinnett, absolutely, good one. Must have already done. Bloom. Nope. Langdon. Did we do Langdon? We did not. Nice. Uh, thanks, Nachos, for giving me the promo. Everyone hit thumbs up. We got a lot of thumbs up. Uh, people are hanging around. Baxter? No. Um, but you are thinking of uh, Carter. Uh, singer from the late 90s R&B singer, Tony. Sounds like Baxter. Strong, yes, absolutely. Um, Gibbons? Nope, Gibbons is a good guess. Hunt, Hunting Town. Nope, we must have already gotten that one, because that's the correct answer. Uh, Braxton, there it is. <laughs> um, Orlando? Nope. Orlando. Man, you guys are putting all sorts of things, man. Uh, Delaware, first constitutional convention. I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, stay over here. Anderson. Nope. Again, not a lot of uh, Swedish or, 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 or Scandinavian names for some reason. Law. No. It's really, you guys are really pushing law today. <laughs> I think we got low, right? Which would have been, yeah. That would have been a correct answer. Dalton. Ooh. And someone said Decatur before, but there's another city in the mid... Is it the Midwest? Northwest Territory? Nolan? Olin Nolan, the pitcher? No, Olin Nolan was a hockey player. Ryan Nolan was the pitcher. Am I right? Who was a baseball fan in the 90s? <laughs> I don't think I um, Right? Is it Ryan Nolan was due with one hand? No, Ryan Nolan was like the greatest guy of all time. Rumsey. Ramsey? No, neither of the Ramsey brothers spelled their last name differently, and neither of them are on this list. Tyler, good one. Ooh. Sinixon. There's Misfit. Oh, coming through just in the end. Harrison. Yes. Uh, Collins. We must have gotten Collins. Right. I think we tried right. All right, Misfit. We're here with two and a half minutes left. We need 25 more. Go. <laughs> Sparrow. Yeah, Miss V, you made it just in time. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> just if you could just name everyone we didn't, that would be great. The last person from Delaware, this is going to bother me. Oh, Hooper, yes. Hi, uh, Jada, thank you for coming. Uh, there's Partridge is a correct answer. Partridge. William Hooper is a great guess. Keep him coming. Uh, thank you for showing up. You're a little tardy, but that's okay. Um, uh, Ward, Otis, uh, Skyler, I think we did get. 
Frost is an interesting guess, but I've never heard the name. Dane. Yes, we must have gotten Dane. Jacob. Nope. Um, hanging out. <laughs> um, minute and a half left. We're trying to get to 200. We need 22 more. Don't know if it's going to happen. But like I said, we're probably going to take a step back when we get this high up. Oh, Hayward. Yes, for sure. Lawrence. No, we did get Lawrence, but there's a, another way to spell Walker. Yes, I think we did Walker. Pain. Did we get pain? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put this one in there. It's Lawrence. I don't know if you saw I spelled that. Park. No. Uh, Lynch. Oh, we must have gotten him. Um, Osgood? Chris Osgood? I'm just going to make a ton of hockey references for the rest of this episode. <laughs> I want the Rangers to trade for Jack Eichel, for those of you who care. Portman? Nope. Oh, Reed. Nope. We got the two Reeds. Different spellings already. Getting greedy with the reeds, Ashley. <laughs> Lloyd. No. Oh, Trumbull for sure. Trumbull. Best is a good guess. Best of the Beatles? <laughs> My jokes are outdated from before I was born. So I say no. Arnold. No. Arnold never actually served in the legislative branch. But of course, that is a very good guess. Ian. Lennon, like, isn't... I know you're joking, Adams, but that's not a terrible guess. Middleton, yes, for sure. That's probably two. Oh, can we get 17 Kinsey? Oh, nice. Oh, running low on time. Running low on time. Last guess. Blair. I think we got Blair. Nope, and that's that. Oakley Dokley. Well, listen. I know we fell a little bit short of last week's 196. Misfit man, just a little. Oh, John Adams. Nelson is a correct answer. <laughs> oh, these are all good answers. The time has expired. Um, again, I know we got 76%. We did not hit the 200 we wanted. We fell short of our 196 from last week, but 184 is a very strong showing. And again, you know, we don't need our whole team every time, but. You know, Misfit only popped in like with like two minutes left, and Matt isn't here. And you know, the more members of the team we have, the better we're just gonna do. Because uh, there's no way I doubt I could ever in my life get all 243 names by myself. You know what I mean? So, don't feel bad. This is an extraordinary showing. Um, uh, let's pop through. We were missing. Yeah, that's all right. And if 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 Misfit was here just a little earlier, uh, Rhodes spelled wrong. Harvey came in at the end. George Mason, that's a tough one. George Mason is a tough one. Uh, Bannister, like walking down the stairs. George Mason is a tough one. <laughs> um, Arthur St. Clair, one we usually get. Uh, probably should have gotten Arthur St. Clair. Muhlenberg, I feel like Ashley says, uh, I'm sorry, Misfit is the one who says Muhlenberg every week, so we'll get that one next week. Uh, Par oh, someone said Park. I didn't even think to type in Parker. Very close. Uh, I believe it was Ginger typed in Borum. Thank you for that. It's very special to me. Um, uh, Henry Wisner is another tough one. Dewar. Ah, ah. It's Dyer. I always like to couple Dyer with Dewar. Um, Nathaniel Gorham. Hey, uh, uh, chair, uh, 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 chairman of the Committee of the Whole. Very important. Sedwick we usually get. Ames we usually get. You know, there's just so many. Oh, you know what, though? We add one because someone did type in Rensselaer. And I thought I typed it this way. But then I tried to type it a few times, but it was right at the beginning when there was I couldn't keep up. Like, I didn't look up at my computer. Like, I was looking at what you were typing, not at the thing, for a full seven and a half minutes. Because <laughs> you guys were just whamming them out. It's great. Great job. Uh, DeHart. Oh, we missed Hart. Oh, no, we did Hart, but not DeHart. Scudder, Brearley. Like, these are important names, but again, like, kind of random. Goldsboro is a tough one. Hanson, we always miss for some reason. Mercer, we usually get. Josh Hartnett. Um, Bloodworth, we got a bunch of the worths. Davey, I think, came in right at the end. or did, Yes, yeah, Misfit typed in Davey, like, right after time. Again, I'm a few seconds ahead of you. Uh, Ash, Bloodworth, Steele, Hall. We didn't do Hall. We must have 
wasted hole in the first game. Uh, Walton, I usually, when I when uh, we got Wolcott, I usually pair Wolcott and Walton because they're similar. Uh, Gilman, Foster, Bourne. I mean, we were very close. So we got, oh, we got all of Connecticut. Okay, great. So we got, at least we got all of one of the states. We got all of Connecticut, Delaware, and Rhode Island. We only missed by one. So, dude, it's a really strong showing. No one be down on this. South Carolina, we only missed by one. And there's a lot of people over here. Um, these states have a lot of people. We missed a bunch of people. <laughs> uh, but a really strong showing. You know, I'll put myself back up. Uh, as we're winding down here, we're well, a minute over. Uh, again, I want to thank you guys. Some of you came in a little bit later. You know, I hit 1,000 subscribers this week. Now, you guys who come and play trivia... Uh, on Fridays, uh, you are my most dedicated uh, audience, uh, so and you have the most fun because you play trivia. So thank you guys all very in particular. Uh, another big shout out to those of you who support me on Patreon, help me offset some of the costs. Uh, next month is three years since I started Founder of the Day, at least the website, um, and now I am officially breaking even. Thank you in large part to the Patriots on Patreon. So you literally have made all the hard work for the last three years balance out at zero so <laughs> which is like good enough for me i really appreciate it um and i hit a thousand subscribers it's not a lot on youtube but it's it's a lot for me um you guys are saying you like the interviews we've got a whole lot of interviews coming up all sorts of authors i'm like emailing with getting them all lined up so you know i, I was gonna gonna be a lot of fun uh from here on out so thank you uh, everyone i actually don't know how you miss st Clair. Uh, Troy, Ashley, Mr. Adams, Misfit, uh, Ginger, Jada, who I know I'm for a fact I'm pronouncing your name wrong because uh, the only I actually know someone with that name is my friend's daughter, and uh, they give me trouble for pronouncing it wrong all, all the time. <laughs> so I do apologize. Uh, I will call you G as I call her, um, uh, and everyone else. Anyone else I miss? Nacho, um, uh, Ashley, Misfit, Ginger. Again, Matt isn't here. Don't care. Lauren. I'm not forgetting you. Thank you guys so much for absolutely everything. I'm going to sign off, take a breather, take Saturday off. I will be back with my, um, although I am still releasing clips, as you've noticed, my weekly review, I am now releasing in the mornings as clips. I am saving the, the Brutuses, though. I'm going to release them all at the same time when I'm done. So thank you guys. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, that's not as old a reference as most of the ones I made this tonight, but uh, that's it. So again, thank you guys. Uh, it's Friday, which means my sign off is Peacefield. So you guys be safe, be happy and healthy, and Peacefield. <laughs>